Finally, Ledger hardware support for Cardano smart contracts. Updates on sidechains, the Marlow Pioneers program, JED, and what's coming up in the Vassal hard fork for scalability. And do you know what input endorsers are? Get ready to get your mind blown. It's time for the weekly report. Welcome back to Woodland Pools. Today it's time for the weekly report. So let's do a quick stake pool update and we'll jump right in. First, I wanna start off by saying a huge thank you and welcome to all of our newest delegators. As always, we truly appreciate your support and we're so excited to go on this journey with you. Let's keep growing together. So the last week of the month means Cardano 360 and there's a bunch of really exciting updates there we wanna share with you. But first, before we get into that, we wanted to point out that Ledger hardware wallets now have support for Cardano smart contracts, finally. So now, if you want to use smart contracts using your Ledger and compatible DEXs and DeFi that's running right now, keep in mind this is not yet in Ledger Live, that's coming later this year you'll still need to use your preferred Cardano wallet like Eternal, formerly CC Vault. But the cool thing is, now if you come to your ledger that's paired with Eternal, you can see there's no longer the warning that says that smart contracts can't be executed on your ledger hardware wallet. This is now enabled. You can come to your accounts list, enable it as your DAP account, and you can now interact with any DEXs that have already done the integration as well. Super exciting stuff. Next, this Cardano 360 was packed with content. We can't go through all of it, but as always, we'll link down below the chapter for each specific section, and there's a few things that we wanted to make sure that we pointed out explicitly. They started off with some updates from the Cardano Foundation, and then from there moved on to updates with the side chains of both Milkomata and Wanchain, as well as an IO specific EVM sidechain that we should expect to be coming out probably later this year. For the EVM sidechain, they had a really nice graphic that walked through the process of the development journey itself and the stages are going to go through for this IO based EVM sidechain. And for those that don't know, an EVM sidechain is for the Ethereum virtual machine for Solidity developers that write smart contracts on Ethereum to be able to launch them on Cardano. This is very similar to what Makamata has been doing and building out with their project. And actually, for those of you that are out there, if you know the difference between what Milkomata's EVM sidechain is looking to accomplish and the one that Input Output is doing, let us know because it's kind of confusing for us for how much overlap there is there. Maybe they're both kind of attempting the same thing, but let us know if you've heard more about these. But both of these are very much in flight right now and we'll do some more updates and cover it more in depth when there's something more sort of meaty to dig into in terms of Ethereum smart contracts actually running as a side chain and then linking into Cardano. But in the next section, they went into some pretty cool announcements about the Marlow Pioneers program. For those of you that aren't familiar with Marlow, a quick reminder. Uh, Marlow's DSL and suite of products creates a blockchain specific way to replicate key financial processes by making it really easy to design and implement smart contracts. So we're positioning Marlow as something that allows for the easy transfer of best practices and principles across the spaces of DeFi and TradFi to create an eventual impact in RealFi. And so obviously the coolest thing about Marlow and the implications for the Cardano ecosystem is that Marlow being a domain specific language with the drag and droppable little blocks that we saw there, you can very easily write a smart contract or use a template of a smart contract without having to know how to write Plutus code to do your simple kind of transactions that you would do of like, setting up a loan and paying it back and things like that. Marlow is a great way for those that have financial backgrounds but not programming backgrounds to be able to utilize Plutus under the hood and write some really great smart contracts on the Cardano blockchain. So then the next thing that they announced that was really cool is that they're kicking off a Marlow Pioneers program similar to what we saw for Plutus Pioneers and Atala Prism for digital identity. The Marlow Pioneers program actually then shortly after this video was released has already kicked off registration. So if you're interested in being a Marlow pioneer and being one of the first people to use Marlow and the domain specific language in order to write smart contracts, make sure to check out the link that we'll put below. But either way for all of us, this is really exciting because it's another way that we're gonna be onboarding so many more people that don't need to know Haskell, don't need to know Plutus and don't need to be developers. And all of these things are the way the ecosystem and the utility keeps growing. Next, as always, there's an update on Project Catalyst. And one of the cool things that they talked about with the Project Catalyst Catalyst update is the ability moving forward in the future, they're going to have what they were calling delegated representative or DREPs. And so basically, instead of you having to stay on top of all of the different proposals, there's over a thousand now in Project Catalyst, you can delegate your voting stake in ADA the same way how you delegate to a stake pool. You can delegate it to a representative who would do the voting on your behalf. So if you don't have the time, you can find a representative that you think represents your vision and your views, and you can delegate to them. They'll do the research and they'll vote. We'll dig into it more as we hear more in the future, but wanted to point out one of the first times we've heard about this, which sounds like a really cool way for people to stay involved and exercise their voting power in Project Catalyst, even if they don't have the time to diligently research all the different proposals. But now if we're talking about 
about things like the side chains that are already in flight, the EVM side chain that's coming up soon, the Marlow Pioneers program to bring more people on, the big thing that we need to keep in mind is, okay, things were pretty congested in the network before. We've been slowly adding incremental improvements to speed up the Cardano blockchain and things have been going really well lately. But everyone's been talking about the Vassal hard fork coming up in June and how that's going to make the network even more scalable and making it that transactions can fly by even faster. In the development update, they announced the date for the Vassal hard fork being on June 29th. And John Woods went into some good detail for us to keep in mind, both in terms of what will be in the Vassal hard fork and as well as what are some expectations that we can realistically set in in terms of, all right, but then what happens once these improvements are implemented, what happens after that? So let me just quickly kind of run through them. Reference scripts, this idea that your script lives on chain rather than being submitted in the transaction. You're gonna to have to change the architecture of your app if you wanna take advantage of this. So no longer including the script in the transaction and instead including a reference so you can point to it on chain. Let's look at inline datums. Again, this is something where we're moving things onto the chain. So now your, your datum, which is like your hard disk for your app, and I don't mean to overly simplify it, but it's arbitrary data that lives on chain. Uh, it can be high scores or other data that's important to your app. That can live now on chain on its own rather than being included in the transaction. Prior to this, it was a fingerprint that lived on chain. So again, you have to make sure that you start forming transactions where you no longer include the datum, which is again, smaller transactions. This is great, but it's not enabled by default. Developers have to embrace these new features. And then finally, reference inputs. Again, maybe quite subtle, this one, the idea that multiple apps and indeed multiple entities can read a UTXO value without having to destroy it and recreate it. Again, folks are gonna to need to change potentially aspects of their architecture in order to take advantage of this. So that's some good stuff to keep in mind. We're gonna have these performance improvements available at the end of June, but in order to sort of temper our expectations, once those are out, then your favorite dApps and DeFi and things are going to need to incorporate those changes to be able to sort of enjoy the benefits that come along with it. But then the thing that was really blowing people's minds was the next thing that John Woods dug into. He gave a really, really great explanation about input endorsers and what they actually are and how they're going to work. We've heard him talk about input endorsers in the past, but this explanation was absolutely mind blowing in terms of how much faster things can get and some of the really creative ways that they're thinking about how we can scale layer one without even needing things like Hydra on layer two. Input endorsers is the internal name for this. And what is it? Well, research after a long time kind of thinking about things have come up with a solution. And the key insight here is if we want to scale Cardano over the next decade, if we want to make things super fast, we need to make a serious change. So what we're going to do is, at the moment, we have a single type of block on the Cardano network. It's a block that is responsible for consensus, and it also holds inside it transactions. Well, the key realization that that research had was, if we decompose this or we split the block into two, so no longer having a single block in the network, but we now have two blocks, and we use one block to hold transactions and another block to achieve consensus, then we have these two block types that work together. And what's great here is, at the moment, our single block is every 20 seconds. So every 20 seconds or so, we have a block that contains transactions and helps with consensus. We're moving to a new system with Ouroboros Eleos, or input endorsers, where we'll still have this consensus block every 20 seconds. But instead of containing transactions, it will no longer do that. It will instead have a reference to a block that holds transactions. But these blocks are much, much faster. So we're going to be constantly streaming transactions nonstop, okay? There's going to be a flurry of these blocks that contain just transactions. And the blocks that are responsible for consensus will simply reference them using what's called reference semantics or a pointer. So with this new system, effectively, we can have consensus every 20 seconds as we currently do. But rather than waiting every 20 seconds to send transactions, we're going to send them all the time. And this ultimately yields a super fast layer one. Now, we don't need this right now. Our current technologies are keeping up with demand, no problem, but we need to stay ahead of the game. And how do we do that? We think for the future and we start implementing this stuff before it's required. How cool is that? So think about that for a second. Yes, you're gonna still need to wait 
for those consensus blocks to achieve your Nakamoto consensus. So, you know, the same way how after you initiate a transaction, how you see the confirmations go from low to medium to high, that's still going to be there. But the cool thing is that with these transaction blocks being separated from the consensus blocks, that value transfer will happen instantaneously. You'll wait for the consensus blocks to have a high level of assurance of that transfer, but the transfer will happen almost immediately because you're gonna have a flurry of blocks that are containing transactions. This is so exciting, and it's gonna be coming potentially later this year. Cannot wait to see how much faster things are going to be just on layer one without even doing anything on layer two. And then if that wasn't good enough, then there was a whole other section dedicated to community projects. They caught up with Sunday Swap, but then Orbis talking about doing ZK rollups and things on layer two and how that can speed things up even more. If you're curious about how UTXO and extended UTXO work and how these things can help to facilitate these layer two things, highly recommend you dig into this section here. And we're gonna do a dedicated video on UTXO and some of these layer two things like ZK rollups in the future, but a really great introduction in this section. And then from there, they caught up with Shahaf Bargeffin from Cody, getting updates on Jed, which is coming out later this year. He shared some information like they already have partnerships with 25 different entities that are ready to work with Jed as soon as it launches. Jed right now is on the private testnet. They're going to soon put it on the public testnet. And he was asking if you're interested to help test out Jed on the public testnet when it's out. The best way to hear about the updates for these different things is to follow the Cody blog, which we'll link down below as well. But we should be seeing some major developments and Jed moving to the public testnet in the coming months. And we'll of course keep you updated on that as we hear more as well. So many exciting things right around the corner. If you feel like the Cardano blockchain is fast right now and there's a lot of things going on today, we cannot wait to see what it looks like three months, six months, a year from now. Can't wait to see what's next. Let us know what you're most excited about. And if nothing else, we'll see you next week.